I, I have an innate nature to help people. And when I look back at my biggest accomplishments, it's it's not being the best programmer or being the best business person. It's I have folks that work for me who are not only are they the best people, but they have succeeded in their careers. And to be a part of that has been my why for sure. Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero episode, and we're very excited to sit and talk with Bobby Cole, who is the founder and president of Think PLC. So welcome, Bobby. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate being here. Oh, man, I'm so excited to have you on and to, to get to know you a little bit more for our listeners to get to know you. And we love to kick these off, Bobby, with just you sharing a little bit about your journey to where you're at now. Yeah, what's funny, Chris, is it's not too far off from your journey. Start off. Decided to get into computer and electronics engineering as a young person and made my way to Old Dominion University for a degree. I think you and I share the same degree. We yeah. shared the same classrooms and the same professors and probably both have the same gray hairs because of it. <laughs> That's right. I thought that was so funny when we were talking to each other. We were like, when did you go to school? Wait a minute. Right. We were there together. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! And then when I when then when we put our faces together, like we did recognize we had some, we were in some classes. Yeah. So it was so such a cool story, man. It is, and then the little nuances of going through such a program that's pretty rigorous is oh, you had Jones for digital electronics. It's yeah. neat to share that moving away, uh, moving to. North Carolina to start my career off, which is interesting after 9-11, trying to find a job with a, as a, uh, a technician or engineer with no experience. It was interesting at that time, you know, a lot like maybe some people were experiencing right now. I hope not. But I moved to Winston-Salem. I, I got an interesting job with a company called Daifuku, one of the largest material handling companies in, in the world. And so I was a hired engineer to help implement a Dell computer plant in Winston-Salem. Okay. So what a way to get up to speed really quick as a young person. I was right in the mix of it. <clears throat> and then while working at Dell, I, I got involved with a local community college, Davidson County Community College, and they had been gifted grants to build the automation program. I think there was some innovation with the college and, and leadership to see that the manufacturing support had died off from the late nineties with the IT boom. And they were working on building an automation focused program, which I was able to help strategically leave in Dell. I did that and decided to be a consultant. I really enjoyed seeing new machines, meeting mm -hmm. new people other than being at the same place every day, seeing the same equipment. And I wanted to be the guy that built it, not just supported it. I was 24 years old teaching at a community college and doing my own thing. And and that grew to, I had 14 employees by the time I was 27 and I sold that business, believe it or not. I had a, a large material handling company that focused in bridge cranes that we built systems for come to me and said, we're spending all this money with you. And we should just buy your business out and make you a manager. And which was a whole world of experience. Like I mentioned before, I could probably author a book and go around to uh, business schools, talk about all the ins and outs of that. And then where I'm at with Think PLC here is taking years and years of experience, those gray hairs, like we talked about what works and what don't and, and hone in on it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I've, I've built. It's about vision, leadership and, and dynamics of being customer and employee focused. Right. Now, where is Think PLC located at? We're just south of Winston-Salem in Welcome, North Carolina. And I had this talk with a guy the other day. He didn't realize he was coming to a town called Welcome. Right. And I was like, the, the sign on the interstate says Welcome with a big arrow on it. Did you just think he was getting off at a friendly place? Do they have the welcome to welcome or just... Uh, they do. <laughs> they do. Okay. There is a huge sign that says welcome to welcome. I love it. It's such a nice little town. We're, we're just minutes outside of downtown Winston-Salem. A lot of manufacturing down here. A lot yeah. of good people down here. That's awesome. And, and so you've been there with Think PLC for a couple of years now, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. That's yeah. great. That's great. And I, and I know you serve a lot of different industries and... What are you seeing out there as some of the greatest challenges that's coming down the pipeline? 
Oh gosh, quickly connecting everything together. These plants want everything connected and they want to be able to see their information. So people have finally figured out that to go home at night, they still need to see what's going on with their machinery. That's the big one. And our customers and our business in general is getting employees and getting employees that are of the holistic caliber, which means that not just a design guy, not just a PLC programmer, A guy who can, they blame it on the PLC not working. You always hear that one in our business. But it it turns out that it was uh, maybe the variable frequency drive that was causing it. But we can't throw our hands up and say, that's not what we do. The changes and challenges are building that up. It's harder and harder to find that talent in the the people that can go multidiscipline. We were talking to a gentleman earlier in, in other episodes about don't just put yourself in a box of, I'm just a PLC programmer. And I think that's what I'm hearing you say. That's it. Don't paint yourself in a box, for sure. There's there's a lot to learn out here in this business, for sure. No doubt. And you, you said you could write a business book on the different principles and things you've learned throughout your career to get you where you're at. But for that young engineer, because we do have a lot of the younger uh, generation that's, that's listening to us, and we're trying to inspire them. Yeah. And I know you teach at the community college as well, so this may be yeah. a, great, a great point for some of the people that may be listening because they know they're professors on this this podcast. But any advice that you'd give them to pursue in that career? Yeah, I yeah, appreciate that. I get this a lot, actually. They want to get to where I am. Right. And it, it hasn't come without its uh, challenges, for sure. I often say don't hesitate in what you're doing. Understand there's no direct path. Don't be scared to get out and learn how to weld or help the electrical guys pull wire. It's not going to hold you back. Right. You know what I mean? I don't yep. care if you have that bachelor's degree in engineering. Go get dirty. We need to work on our soft skills as engineers and learning you know, how to engage. And again, we work with our guys internally here with leadership and how we engage with our customers and, and being that entrepreneurial a team member they represent us and that's true in any business you you represent the company you represent your family whatever it is and what does that mean yeah yeah no doubt great advice wonderful advice and you mentioned earlier when we were talking prior about the the way you're trying to lead at think plc having more of a mentorship type of approach and to really grow people in their careers have you had any mentors that stood out to you in in the past that helped shape you to, to where you are now Oh my gosh, I wouldn't be here at all without the right people. It's not by uh, happen chance for sure. Steve Sink comes to mind. Steve was a long-term instructor, a degree engineer from NC State that worked at Davidson County Community College. He was instrumental in the bringing me into the college at the time. And I learned from him and how he was such a tough teacher. He was so tough. He gave you zero. You, you earned everything you got. But he was so loving and he cared about everybody that was in his class. And and I think that helped folks get through such a tough program with the math and, uh-huh. and what it takes to do these engineering programs. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, he comes to mind, Richard Consoli. He's the president of Jay King. I've known Richard for a long time. He started out as an engineer at Eastman Chemical. I started a company just like me and grew it and sold that business. And amongst how good of a engineer he is, and here you are, you're hearing me talk, He's an amazing person. And so what I collect too is these, you know, people that you you can model yourself after. Uh, you only hope to. And and those two guys are the two people that I live my life daily saying if I can operate like they did, I'll, I'll be okay. Yeah, absolutely. How about the way you guys have, have started doing mentorship there at Think PLC and, and that approach? Anything you would like to share? Yeah, you and I you and I've talked about it before, you know. What I'm doing differently this time around in business is I'm, I'm really studying myself in leadership. And that's fine. Me as principal engineer and, and owner, I'm working on mine, but it wouldn't be fair if I didn't help everyone that worked here, every role that works at Think PLC. I took a step back from that and started using what I was learning. And I've started using some of the teachers, some of the books, some of the mentorship. As I mentioned before, we're, we're having leaders in business come in and, and talk to our team, everyone, not just me on what it means to be an entrepreneurial team member, what it means to have ethics, things of that nature. I think it's engaging with our employees holistically. No doubt. Bobby, with where you're at and the the things that you've done in your career, when do you find that you're 
in that moment of, of flow and, and it's you're the happiest you feel like that fulfillment is, is coming your way for the work that you're doing just what are you doing in those moments <laughs> a happy celebration for me is a moment of silence in the evenings these days yeah a lot of satisfaction is when i cut those bonus checks every quarter when i genuinely know it, at this moment every customer I know for a fact that they're, they're completely happy. I know that the people that work for me, they're proud to be where they are because we travel all over the place. Right. And they know that, that I'll get in the weeds with them just as much as they are. No doubt. You can definitely hear, man, that you really care about the people you work with. I do. Yep. Yeah. And that that shows, I mean, you've, you've had success at Think PLC. You guys are growing. How about when you're at the, because you do uh, community college as well, right? Yes. So what do you enjoy the most about that? I like to see the light bulb come on. I'm one of these people that I get frustrated when someone doesn't understand what I'm talking about. Right. They just can't get it. I want everybody to be on the same page. I want everybody to get it. And so I sometimes over challenge myself to, to make sure when someone just don't understand that complicated engineering task. And, and I've been one thing that I'm proud of over anything I've done is I've had customers and, and students give me feedback that I'm grounded in that, that I'll make a, a good effort to yeah. communicate those things. If you was to come back and look at some of the programs I've done and some of the software I've written, some of the, the HMIs that I've done over, you you know, when you get, you would say, wow, I can follow what he was doing. The simple is better. And like we learned in John Hackworth's class, there, there is a right path forward and you do have to show your work. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. How about for those kids that, that you're teaching there? I'm just curious, are they looking at uh, manufacturing and industry as positive? Are they excited about it? I, I don't know if they are when, when I get there, but i tell you what is great is my involvement still to this day where I'm in and out of the classroom because I, I can't do it full time. And so I come in with experiences. I talk to them and I'm like, you know, yesterday I was in Indiana and I was working on a robot and, and I, I tell them about experiences and I'll show them pictures and videos. I'll throw up YouTube videos, something I did a year ago at some really neat place. I talk to them about innovating at Krispy Kreme donuts. Everybody understands the delicious treat. That that seems to help. Um, and recently I was a guest speaker at University of Tennessee for the National Association of Chemical Engineers, which is kind of interesting, but chemies are becoming controls people these days. So okay. I thought it was a neat ask. And one of the jokes I made early on trying to break up the nervousness I had standing in front of 300 people was some of the plants that we work in now are cleaner than some of the dorm rooms on campus, you know, and just to paint the picture, because yeah. when you think about those old, dirty manufacturing facilities, that's what Hollywood's going to paint it as. That's you always right. hear about them closing down, and that's not it. We got a champion manufacturing. No doubt, man. We had a whole series, and we talked about manufacturing perception and how that's changing and how it's not the dark, dirty, nasty. There's some industries that that is just inherent if you're in the the, the basement of, of a pulp mill, that's yeah. different. But if you're in manufacturing, it, it, in chemical manufacturing, things like that, you can eat off some of those floors. Yeah, and thank you for being a champion of the industry. It really means a lot. What you're doing with the podcast, getting them out there, it's, it's education. I tell you, I just, I love talking with people like you, but also just the, the engineers that are out there. We were recently interviewing an a engineer at an OEM and just the passion they have. It's just, uh, it's a cool. It's cool. That's why I'm trying to get that out to the next generation to see to yeah. get excited about it because it's yeah. so many things you can do. Yeah, I, I, you know, talking to these young people, I, I say I, I've sat in the hole of a cruise ship with five thousand people and press the enter key on my keyboard to, to an S7 400 and you feel the whole ship shake. You know, with something you did, it's pretty dang cool. <laughs> that is um, cool, man. Yeah, yeah. So that's awesome, Bobby. We, we love to take these hero episodes and, and get off the professional path a little bit and let people okay. learn just about about you outside of work. So how about any hobbies that you have, that, the things you enjoy doing? I have all the hobbies. Okay, okay. <laughs> and sometimes no time to do them. I'm a pretty active person. I'm an I'm a active musician. A lot of people wouldn't <laughs> know that. I'm a drummer. done that since I was a kid. And so that's always a blast. I ride mountain bikes. I'm an avid motocross rider. You wouldn't know that stepping out of the, the business world. <laughs> I throw a helmet on and a pair of boots and, and get my sweat out on a dirt bike sometimes with friends and family. 
And gosh, yeah, with COVID, the one thing I've learned was that I miss people. Mm -hmm. I miss going on a Sunday and meeting my friends at a local craft brewery and having a laugh. I'm so looking forward to getting back to where you can engage the, the brew logics events that, that we've talked about before, where we bring in, we invite everybody, competitors, suppliers, whoever. And we, we talk about how to implement some of the technology we're doing over a craft beer and just getting back where we can do that is so much looking forward to it. No doubt, man. So you're a drummer. Do you uh, still play pretty regularly? I, I wouldn't say regularly anymore, but yes, I, I do. I do quite often. Getting a group together seems to be harder and harder as, as you get busier and busier. But yeah, uh, yeah what fun. I've I played for churches and I've played in groups and I've definitely let it slip over the years. And it's, it's on the, the 2021 goals to, you know, again, it's just like the dirt bike riding. Sometimes after you've, you've laid it all out on the field, as they say, and you've done these long days and you've solved these problems throughout the day. You got to leave it somewhere and beating on some drums or, or turning the throttle on a, on a motorcycle is always a good way to do it. That's awesome. Now, do you ride by road bikes too, or just in the dirt? I have. Yeah, I, I have. I don't do it as much as, as I once did. Yeah. I was doing 30 miles a day at one point and um, definitely went to the dirt. I'm like to jump and get dirty more than I guess I realized. So when, and then the life cycle of cell phones have kept me off the sides of the roads, to be honest with you. Right. So right. Just me and some trees is good enough for me. I hear you, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thanks. Thanks for sharing about the hobbies. How about your family? Anything you like to share about your family? Oh my gosh. I, I've got the best family. Um, son of a coal miner and a, and a paramedic now nurse. I come from the hardest working people that you can meet. So using that has been motivation for me to, to be grounded throughout the years. And I can tell you both of my parents will ground me in a second if I think I'm anything better than anybody. So, um, you know, uh, brother, I've got nephews and nieces and we've been so fortunate to stay healthy and, and stay happy. And, and I get to see them quite often, even though they live in Virginia. So it's great. Okay. So where is family at in Virginia? Yeah. So I grew up in the very Southwest tip of Virginia. How about you? You're, you're from Virginia as well, right? I am Clarksville. Yep. Right there on 58. You were, you probably went right through it going to ODU many times. I did. I, I had a map, no cell phone yep, yep. <laughs> and my Chevy Cavalier and I drove right through there. And yeah, so the southwest tip of Virginia, the county I'm from makes the very tip that meets Kentucky and Tennessee, Appalachian Mountains there, a lot of coal mining, some logging. Uh -huh. Of course, very depressed these days with coal mining being what it is. But I tell you, the people there are, are no different and no less strong than they were years ago. Now, is that close to Bristol area? It's too? very close, yeah. Bristol is about probably a 40-minute drive. Okay. Yep. It's interesting. You go to Bristol, you have to go into Tennessee and then back over into Virginia. Right. You can be in Kentucky in about 15 minutes or so, and you can be in Tennessee in about 25 minutes. I got you. Okay. Yeah. we I've been to a couple of Bristol races. So I think we stayed in your area when we went up there. You probably did. Yeah. 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 Bristol's great. Yep. Yeah, a lot of fun. I tell you what, unless you have vertigo, because if you were inside that, if you're, I don't know if you've been in, to the racetrack, but it's basically oh, yeah. straight down. Yeah, it's one of the, I think it has the most bankment of any sanctioned NASCAR track. Yeah. Or did at one point. I know they changed it. Yeah. And yeah. I know you can, I think around Christmas, I know my parents have done it where you can drive out on the track and they light it up with Christmas lights and stuff we like that. We did that as kids. Yeah. And everybody in the car is leaning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're watching the lots and, and fighting with your older brother. It's a good time. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. How about, you know, I know you're active on social, but yeah. any podcast or YouTube channel, books, anything that you find value that, that you think our listeners may enjoy? Yeah, so Think PLC is active in video production right now. Uh, we're trying to bring what we do to the world because we kind of get sheltered a little bit and don't get to talk to the public in the sense of someone that don't know us that already does business with us. So we, we just filmed a podcast, which is kind of interesting, a live podcast. We are, like I say, doing video production of our shop or showing our engineering space. We want to entice people to understand how we work through day to day. Outside of that, yeah, quite a bit. I, I just finished this new Matthew McConaughey book, Green Lights. I recommend it. It's great. I love the optimism. I love the bumper stickers, as he calls them. And with that being said, it's about living your life and making the best of it and, and appreciative of people and what that means. Outside of that, <clears throat> I 
I think I mentioned to you Death by Meetings. I, I finished uh-huh. that book up recently. I just was given a book called The Gift of Struggle. It's a leadership book. I'm doing a lot of leadership training and study. So from that, I got to say the Eco Podcast is the place to go get your podcast. You guys do a great job. Well, man, I, I, that's very flattering. Thank you so I'm much. I'm a fan. That's uh, I was I, I was so appreciative when you invited me because I'm a fan. As much as I am of you, man, that's awesome. And, and we'll definitely put some links in the show notes for the books that you referenced as well as links to to connect directly with think plc and yourself so people can follow you and and reach out to you directly i see you're following man it's growing your numbers are growing it's grown really quick yeah it's been interesting the like we talked about before linkedin was a place where it was only recruiters at one point and we saw activity with the the new social law a couple years ago come up it become a place where you could post good content. You could get away from the, your uncle who, with his political views on Facebook, you could go hide in LinkedIn and see something neat that might help you in your career or some new technology you needed. So I made it a focus a year or so ago to make it a place where we're going to put ourselves out there. You know, right. We want people to know what we're doing. I'm not saying me, but the, the guys that work at Think PLC, the guys and gals doing some really neat stuff. Yeah. We talk about character. Um, we're so focused on character and serving each other. And everybody's talking about culture. You can, there's, there's every book in known to man about culture. And I've come around to if we can build character together, we can grow our culture together. There you go, man. I love it. I love it. One thing we've been doing, Bobby, we started is the lightning round and for, for the, the latest hero episodes. And it's fun. I enjoy it. And I think it gives our listeners a little insight to the guests. So it's random stuff, man. You can have quick answers. You can have uh, a little bit longer if you like, but just let us get to know you a little bit more if you're uh, if you're willing to play. Yeah, let's let's do it. Let's All get right, it done. Man. All right, man. Start with a softball. Favorite food, man? Uh, Thai food. Thai food. Okay. Adult beverage. Uh, any hazy IPA right now? <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice, nice. All time favorite movie. Oh, way too difficult. I'm enjoying the new Ford versus Ferrari because I have a Shelby GT500 myself. Nice, nice. That was a good movie. That that the Ford versus Ferrari. Great. How how about? I am interested because you said you're a drummer. Yeah. How about your favorite music, man? Oh, another one. Impossible for me. <laughs> and if I let uh, Spotify go or or Pandora go down the path, it's yeah. so random. It's bluegrass into heavy metal, okay. into folk music. To I, I'm a mixed bag. I, re- I really am. I'm just a music appreciator. I love it. I lo- How about, so if you had to pull, pick, and I'll let you pick two favorite bands of all time, man. Just throwing that out there. Let's see, we, see, what, see what comes back. <laughs> favorite bands. Oh, my gosh. I would, I would probably pick Zeppelin for Bonham. I would probably pick Van Halen for the, the guitar. <laughs> I, would, I would build my band. You get me on all levels. You can always throw in my favorite for Skinner, but I'm just saying. You know, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Van Zant on vocals. I would, we're building the team. Yeah, That's it, man. We got the dream team, man. That's awesome. All right. How about somewhere you ha- you've never been, but you'd love to go? Somewhere I've never been that I would want to go. Fiji. Okay. How about the spots you have been to that you enjoy the most? I would go back to Sweden. I got a chance to go there as a young man. I worked for a Danish company and had a chance to travel to Denmark and spend midsummer in North Sweden years ago as a young man. And it was, it was incredible. Nice, man. Nice. Okay. How about uh, pets, man? Dogs, cats, other? Uh, Greyhounds. I'm a Greyhound lover. Retired Greyhounds from racetrack. I recently lost my 13 year old Brindle Greyhound had been with me for 10 years he was rescued uh, from Florida. Okay. Um, he had been a Florida racing dog, traveled around. They are the best pets. If you've never been around a Greyhound, go visit Project Racing Home and go adopt one. Okay. We'll throw that Project Racing Home in the show notes too. So Absolutely. I am curious. I'm, I don't know a lot about the Greyhound breed. So what's the typical age for the Greyhounds? 11 to 13 okay. is very common. Okay. That's yeah. They're awesome. very, very interesting. They have very good blood. They have large blood vessels so vets love to use their blood in fact they'll ask for greyhound blood for transfusions for other dogs they're hypoallergenic they usually don't shed that much they're just so laid back people think that they need a massive backyard to have one because they can run 45 miles an hour but they really just want to lay on a couch 20 hours out of the day they are the best pet so so mild-mannered and you said they're hypoallergenic too 
Yes. I don't, yeah. I didn't realize that. Okay, because I have allergies, so we have to be selective for our animals. So we actually have a uh, giant schnauzer. He's yeah. he's he's my boy, but uh, I didn't realize the greyhounds were that way, man. They are. They are. And just their anatomy is so incredible. We date back to the Egyptians. It's They're just incredible creatures, right? Yeah, that's awesome. Well, man, yeah. you survived a lightning round, brother. <laughs> so difficult. <laughs> Very good, man. Bobby, this has been a blast. I, 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 I love getting to uh, to know you and sharing your story. And we always wrap up Eco Ask Why with the why, man. And it's, it's just talking about the passion and what drives people. So if somebody were to pin you down, hey, Bobby, I, I want to know what your personal why is. What would that be? Everybody that works at Think PLC. Okay. There Everybody that works here. That's my why. That's why I get up and that's why I do it. I, I have an innate nature to help people. Some of the folks that work at Think PLC are ex-students. They were past students of mine that come up and I brought them through the ranks. And when I look back at my biggest accomplishments, it's, it's not being the best programmer or being the best business person. It's I have folks that work for me who are not only are they the best people, but they have succeeded in their careers. And to be a part of that has been my why, for sure. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, hat, hats off to you. We, nothing but blessings for Think PLC in the future, man. We, we love you guys and what you're doing. And check them out. Check out the show notes. We'll have everything that Bobby referred to there. You can connect with him, follow Think. And just thank you again, Bobby, for, for coming on and sharing your story. Yeah, same here, Chris. Eco, you guys are doing a great thing. So looking forward to it. Thank you, sir. You have a great day. You too. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S. W-H-Y dot com. <laughs>